I'm Courtney Carter in Providence, Rhode Island. As it is across the country, opioid addiction is a crisis here in the Ocean State. I sat down with one man who's sharing his story of addiction to help other people, as well as sat down with Rhode Island state officials to see what they're doing to help in the fight. You know, it all started with cocaine, which led to painkillers, which eventually led to heroin. Chris Heron, a New England native and former pro basketball player, says one of his life's biggest accomplishments is getting off opioids. I went from the treatment center to a halfway house, and after 90 days there, I went into a sober house. Every fiber in me wanted to go back home, but I was extremely grateful that I had people around me saying, commit now, put the time in now, and you know, it will pay off in the end. And it did. He says he tried to get off heroin since he was 21, suffering multiple overdoses. He finally achieved sobriety at age 32. Heron celebrated 11 years of sobriety this August, and now he's trying to help others like him. He opened up his own rehabilitation center last year in Seekonk, Massachusetts, and knows sadly in southern New England, he is far from alone. The problem everywhere, Rhode Island is not exempt. It's a huge problem. Um, you know, we're living in a crisis. Although there is no way to accurately measure how many people in the state are using, the Rhode Island Department of Health says they've seen 1,086 emergency room visits in 2019 alone due to overdose, as well as 208 overdose deaths so far this year. Yeah, so substance use in Rhode Island is a big problem in general. State officials say they're doing everything they can to help, including teaming up with Governor Gina Raimondo for the governor's overdose prevention and intervention task force created shortly after she took office. The stakeholders include folks from the Department of Health, including Department of Corrections, and then we have other colleagues from the legislature, from law enforcement, second Wednesday of every month. The task force created a four-point plan, more access to naloxone, also known as Narcan, more peer recovery programs, more medication-assisted treatment, and better prescription monitoring, as well as reaching young people through marketing campaigns. Buses, billboards, social media are just a few of the examples. Part of what we're trying to do is meet people where they're at. People are busy and they don't have time necessarily to go to our website and read through all the resources we have. Federal grants are also helping in the fight. Yeah, so the Department of Health has been very successful at acquiring federal grants. Um, it's a little over $3 million. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention awarding Rhode Island that money for better tracking of overdose deaths so authorities have better access to data. That data will support prevention, treatment, and recovery programs. In addition, the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration is allocating nearly $12.6 million to Rhode Island through state opioid response grants. And there is something they say we can all do to help. You know, unfortunately, the stigma that's, surround, that's surrounded by opioids. I think one big concept is opioid disorder is a brain disease, and the stigma we're experiencing is still pretty powerful, and I think those negative public perceptions just aren't helpful. We really shouldn't judge people with opioid disorder. It's not helpful, and it doesn't make people get better quicker. According to the CDC, on average, 130 people die of an overdose every day across the country. But with everything from task force to campaigns to sharing personal stories, those in our backyard say they're doing everything they can to help in the fight. In Providence, I'm Courtney Carter, Eyewitness News.